To say that 2022 has been quite the roller coaster for professional wrestling would be a massive, massive understatement. There's stuff outside the ring, like Vince McMahon retiring. Boy, that was certainly shocking. I don't think anything is going to beat that goddamn story. No matter what shocking stuff happens in any wrestling ring, across any company, across any continent, I don't think anything is going to shock us as much as that. But also, there's stuff like the AEW All Out Media Scrum. There's plenty of good things, like... A lot of great professional wrestling taking place in companies like WWE, AEW, New Japan, across all the indies, across other companies like Stardom, Impact, MLW, a cornucopia of wrestling with a lot of great wrestlers, a lot of up-and-coming wrestlers, main event towns, people waiting to bubble up and burst out and show what they can do. And across all these platforms, so many wrestlers, so little time. But I'm here to talk about some wrestlers that maybe haven't flown quite under the radar but they've got the chance, in my opinion, to have a breakout 2023. So let's get to it. I'm John Rittham with my 15 wrestlers to look out for in 2023 with a few honorable mentions like Top Flight. I think Layla Hirsch, once she comes back from injury, is going to have a breakout 2023. Can't wait to see her back. She really improved before her unfortunate injury. Ricky Starks, Willie Hobbs, powerhouse Willie Hobbs. And there you go. There's others that I could mention, but let's... Let's hear from you guys. I want to hear some honorable mentions in the comments. I want to hear some other people. I want to know who you think across whatever company. It doesn't matter what company. I want to know. I want to know what love is. No, actually, I don't. I want to show it. Okay, no, I don't want to do that. Let's stop singing. Let's get to the top 15. The Creeds. Okay, the Creeds have already shown what they can do. And I will say right now, when I first saw Diamond Mine, I'm like, okay. I don't know about these guys. I see a little bit of talent, but I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. The Creeds have turned out to be one of my favorite tag teams going today. <laughs> they are very rough around the edges. They're going to need some more seasoning. But my God, they hit hard, and they have a lot of skill. They have a lot of goddamn skill. Julius probably could be the one breakout if they ever broke the team up. But Brutus, he hits like a brick. They're basically a version of the Steiners for the modern day. Ironic considering that they work on the same brand as Rick Steiner's son. And, I mean, you could honestly throw Braun, Breaker, Steiner in the honorable mentions as well. But he's already done so much great stuff. The Creeds, yes, they were tag team champions. And they, you know, there's been some weird stuff. Like, let's just ignore that whole Grey's Anatomy style acting piece that they did with Roderick Strong. We still haven't seen Roderick Strong, but boy, that thing wasn't all that great. Their promos may need a little bit of work, but as far as in the ring, they're going to get better. They are going to get better, and they're going to improve, and they have that intensity. It's uncoachable intensity. You either have it or you don't, and they have it. Number 14. Okay, so I picked two, so I'm cheating a little bit. The 15 could have an asterisk next to it. Uh, Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade, who had a feud that was great when they were allowed to go out there and be athletes and do some stuff and lay some shit in, and since they are actually friends... They were able to lay it in in safe places and just put it anywhere and just put each other on their back. And I am getting really, really off base with this whole thing. But when one topped the other, the other topped the other, and then they went to where they were just going to top each other and just beat each other down and beat each other up and everything. And I don't know what I'm on about anymore. But Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade combined are like, what, 41? Yeah, Cora's 21. Roxanne, I think, just turned 20. And the sky's the limit for both of them. Whether they stay in WWE NXT or just in WWE in general beyond their three-year deals, if they stay there for a while, great. If they don't, they could branch out and do some great things on the indies like they did to get themselves noticed before. Roxanne Perez was in Ring of Honor for a little bit as the women's champion. Cora Jade as Elena Black was doing, uh, getting some buzz on the indies. <clears throat> and interesting to see what they're both going to be able to do. Cora currently is a heel. Roxanne Perez as the fiery um, underdog babyface. There's a lot of really a lot of potential with these two, and 2023 is going to certainly be interesting. And then we get to number 13, Yuya Yamura, or as Alex Kozlov says on New Japan Strong Commentary, Yuya Yamura. Kozlov has energy. I just don't understand a goddamn thing he says. Yamura is one of the young lions that <clears throat> went on excursion. Unfortunately, the pandemic did kind of settle that shit down <clears throat> so he got he got an attention on new japan strong and has actually really really improved and you could throw shota umino in there as well he even though his stuff he had a few appearances in AEW. he had a recent appearance on uh, new japan or you know new japan wrestling will osprey for the new japan stardom crossover event that let's just say i didn't have a chance to see it because i just i've had so <clears throat> little time on my hand but these crop of young lions, these particular three, I'm going to mention one here in a bit, 
really do have, they could help carry, shoulder the load for New Japan for a number of years. But I'm going to go with Yuya Yamura because Shota's gotten a little bit more buzz. Yuya has kind of flown under the radar, and I think could really have a breakout 2023. Put him in the best of Super Juniors if you want to. Put him in the G1. I don't care. He's he's improving. He is improving a lot. And then we get to number 12. Khan. Bishop Khan. K-A-U-N. Oh, fuck it. I can monkey with my list and monkey with the numbers. Throw Toa Leona in there. Uh, the Gates of Agony. Khan has a great look. An incredible look, actually. Like, you look at him, he's just chiseled out of goddamn stone. And he can work. <laughs> he has good poise in the ring. The times I've seen him on AEW Dark, AEW Dark Elevation, the times on Rampage, teaming with Toa Leona, there, there's potential there. There's a lot of potential there, and I can't wait to see what Khan does. Hopefully, they feature him a little bit more. Hopefully, this whole thing with uh, Ring of Honor having their TV deal on Honor Club and you know maybe able to get it on cable at some point, it would be nice to see. But Khan, you know, in the few, in the you know, maybe the year that I've seen him on programming. Right, and I know he's wrestled longer than that. I'm not trying to say it. I, I see great potential in Khan. K-A-U-N, by the way. Number 11, Rebel Kel. Six-foot stunner for a reason. She looks great. She has improved dramatically in the ring. Everybody's got to start somewhere, but you know what? She <clears throat> has the energy. She has the enthusiasm. She's proven she's tough. I've seen her at multiple indie shows. I've seen her at the five shows. seen her at Without a Cause shows. And I've seen footage of, you know, from other indie promotions. She has really, really improved dramatically, and I hope the Rebel Kel continues to get opportunities because very down-to-earth, works hard, has really improved, so hopefully she gets more chances because she is quite, quite good. Number 10, Press 10 Vance, or Preston Vance, as it were. The recently unmasked 10 who made Brody Lee Jr. cry. That was kind of funny. I don't know why it was, <laughs> but... And you can even kind of see it in his eyes. He's like, oh, God, you know, I'm his favorite wrestler. I really feel bad, but I mean kids in on it but Vance had the best look and now that they've taken the mask off let's see what he can do good looking athlete good size very good size and has some good intensity now let's see how he does as a heel you can eventually switch him back face but keep the mask off it works he can he, he can be somebody at least in the mid card compete for the TNT championship <laughs> put him in ring of honor compete for the TV championship you can do stuff with this guy because he does have a good look, and I'd like to see what he can do. Hopefully, he stays healthy. I know he had a knee injury that was out, uh, a knee injury, and he had an arm injury. He had some, so he's had a couple injuries. But hopefully, he's going to be able to have a, you know, injury free 2023. And let's see what this alignment with Roosh can do for him. Number eleven, Sol Ruka. Only seen a little bit of her, but boy, she's bubbly, and boy, she has um, she she's a really good athlete. You you can see. I mean, that's. That's the uncoachable athleticism. Like, that's just something you're born with. It, it, maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Rukaline. She really can be a bright star for the future. And if she can... T if she <laughs> that clip that went sort of viral, as the kids say, of her doing that st uh, that flipping cutter off the, <clears throat> off the ropes, or that flip into the cutter, that... Beautiful. She can, if she can do that, she can just fine-tune a few things. Like, you know, considering she's only been on TV for a little bit, a lot of potential there. Number eight, J.C. Jane, my goodness. I always have to add that because J.C. Jane of Toxic Attraction, I think, stands out the most. Nothing against Mandy. Mandy has done uh, a whole lot better with this title reign than expected. J.C. and Gigi Dolan are a very good team. J.C. is the star of the two as far as a single star. Makes the most of her TV time. Makes the most of any chance she has when the camera's on her. Not taking away from her opponents, but just stealing the show. And I, I could absolutely see J.C. Jane being a breakout star. I'm a big fan of J.C. Jane. And yes, she looks good. It's impossible not to notice that. <laughs> but you have to have skills. And she has skills. She has the personality to absolutely pull it up and be a breakout star. Not just in 2023, but far beyond. And then we go to number seven. A man I've nicknamed Mega Man. It's Nathan Frazier. I say Mega Man because he's got the quick man uh, bar things in his uh, intro video. I don't know why I noticed that and why my mind went to that reference. Probably because that's about one of the last video games that really challenged me. Yes, that's how old I am. I remember uh, playing that game. Mega Man 2. No, nevertheless, Nathan Frazier, trained by Seth Rollins. I don't know how long of a career he will have because when he dies, boy, he just goes full bore. I really hope he can slow down uh, things a little bit, but he's got hops, he's got skills, and he he's exciting. He is exciting. I see why people praised him 
in his um, NXT UK run, but damn, like first time I saw him, because I've only seen a little bit of him in NXT UK, first time I saw him on NXT 2.0, thank God we're away, at least from that name, I'm like, see why people praised him, so will he break out? I hope so, because he, he is quite good. So we get to number six, Ren Narita. Ren Narita, I think, even more than Yuya, has the has absolute superstar potential. That you know, bridge pin that he does a high gable grip, just you know, doing that that bridge pin, that beautiful bridge pin. That is just a beautiful finish. And the guy, he kind of has hair a little bit like Shibata. I mean, you can kind of see the Shibata influence. Nobody's gonna be like Shibata, but you can take those, you can take certain things and make them your own. And shape him into how you are, or to, into what you should be. But man, Ren Narita, he's good. He is really, really good, and that's why I had to put him here on this list, pretty goddamn high. Now we get to number five, Takeshita Kanosuke Takeshita. Boy, that name is hard to pronounce. Okay, I said before, I'll say again: the whole DDT Pro thing, the whole wrestling kids don't necessarily care for. It. Don't care for it at all. It's weird. Weird. Why are people over there weird? Don't get it. Why would you wrestle children? That being said, Takeshita, you cannot knock this man's athletic ability. He is good. He has the fans on his side, and he shows out. Whenever he appeared on AEW programming and then, you know, went uh, was on excursion for a bit and now was signed to AEW, oh, yeah, they got, they got a big star here. They got somebody. If he doesn't, if he has not, you know, doesn't at least have tag gold, I don't know who you team with, if he doesn't at least have some form of championship gold, by double or nothing, or even maybe, or maybe all out at the latest. If he's not champion before the uh, next year is done, I don't know what we're doing here. Big, big superstar potential here, and he just recently had a match with John Moxley on Rampage. It was quite good. So number four, Idris Enofe and Malik Blade. Okay, I wasn't so sure I'd take these guys at first when I saw them on television. Cause I'm like, okay, they have good looks. They do. They they look like stars. And then I was like, okay, personality, all right, cool, you know, whatever. I mean, it's like, you know, again, I'm just, I'm a 41-year-old wrestling fan. I've been watching since 1985, but that doesn't mean I'm an expert on this shit. It just means I judge, you know, I just, I've seen so many wrestlers come in and up and down the pike and everything. You're not exactly sure how it takes some people. These guys were starting to impress, uh, you know, a lot of people early on and then they started getting more stuff like when they shout out to skinny mysterio by the way big titty taron you you, you know th those who know know uh taron's awesome and <laughs> it was, yeah there was some video they did where they referenced her um video i think it was on twitter or something like that. they were answering fan questions but i gotta say this about blade and anofi when they are on TV, they, they make the most of their television time. And they're good. They're good in the ring. They're a good team. I could see them being the ones to beat the New Day. In fact, quite frankly, I think they should be the ones to beat the New Day. Unless the New Day, say, lose to Carmelo Hayes and Tricky Tiki Williams. And then you have Malik Blade and Idris Anofi beat Tricky Tiki Williams and Carmelo Hayes. You could have that happen. But Blade and Anofi will be tag team champions in 2023. There you go. Let's mix some bold predictions in there. Now, they should be tag team champions because they're good. Number three, Nick fucking Wayne. So before I'll say again, prior to the Pacific Northwest, great kid, talented, absolutely sky's the limit. The only thing stopping him really is time. He is going to continue to improve. A great down-to-earth kid. Great talent. <clears throat> and absolutely astonishing to see the improvements that he's made just from working on the independent scene. You know, the local independent scene. Then he's worked in GCW and other. He worked on the card for Ric Flair's last match. You know, that's how great he is already. I mean, he's he I don't even think he's his 18th birthday yet. If I remember, I mean, if, if he has, I mean, I don't, we're, uh, then, you know, or we're close to it. The whole point is, is he can't even legally rent a car. He can't even legally drink in this state. That's a few years away. And he's already having banger after banger after banger. I'm sorry to steal that from Seamus, but Nick Wayne is just goddamn tremendous, and that's why I have to praise him here. Number two, Kiana James. Put her a lot higher on this list after that uh, showcase in the Iron Survivor Challenge match thing, whatever the hell it was. Kiana, for as little time as she's had on television, as far as in the ring, as she's had matches on Level Up, 
I'm not saying she's polished. It's obviously going to take some time, but she has a great presence. God, does she have a great presence. Good Lord. But she, she is strong as a bull. And I mean that with respect. And she's got, she's, she's got the presence about her and has made improvements in the ring. So I think 2023 is going to be a big, big <clears throat> year for her. We could, if they had, if she had a tag team partner to get with, she could challenge for tag team championship gold. Maybe get Gia or whatever the heck her name is, the assistant. Get her to wrestle. That would be a dynamite tag team. Let's just move on from that. Keanu James will be very, very, she'll continue to improve in 2023 because she's already done well this year. Number one, Willow Nightingale. You know, it, it's funny. I kept thinking I just saw Willow Nightingale on television with appearances in AEW and then kept thinking, like, you know, I swear I've seen Willow Nightingale before. If I recall correctly, she was on the Shimmer at the Collective show sometime in 2020. I can't remember if it was, I think it was late 2020. But the whole point is it was Willow Nightingale and I believe a talent named Solo Darling. And I kept thinking, okay, they're actually a pretty good team. I thought Solo Darling would be, uh, you know, a breakout star. I don't know what happened to her, but Willow Nightingale. That's a name a lot of people have mentioned, and you know what? She's damn good. She has got a ton of personality and strong, talented, can move well, can, you know, can play the power game, can technically work. She's, she's good. And the bubbly personality will help her. She just seems so goddamn likable, and that's... Willow Nightingale should taste AEW gold in the coming year, or they put her in Ring of Honor and they have her beat Athena for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. Not exactly sure, but Willow Nightingale is certainly somebody to keep your eye on. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Recklin. I'll see you soon.